Here we go. It is mapping. Yeah, mapping. I got a package, guys. I'm I'm so amazed. Uh, yeah, let's open this up. Oh man, I'm I'm so happy that I finally got it. Um, it has to do with things I ask. And in here, a friend of mine who bought a mapper, he mapped him uh, his hotspots, and uh, then he gave me the opportunity that I am also able to map my hotspots. Uh, 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 uh. Nice. So you put a power bank in, but unfortunately, this device was sitting too long in the mail so probably it is dead it seems like it's dead yeah but i will show you more in just a second oh uh, i got the things i x mapper with me as you can see it's solid green this means it has a geolocation and uh, i'm currently in another city and i know up there is an antenna but for some reason i have a clear view and I'm not mapping. If I map, it should turn over to a solid white for two seconds and then back to green until I move far away or a certain amount of time has been passed. So let's see if I can map this area here. It's a wide area, a lot of grass, so I can probably walk all, all over it. Let me see. Oh man, it's the best weather for mapping. Nice. I love it. I love thunder. So let me quickly talk about what has happened and why I had issues to actually map um, the gateway that I was trying to map in the fields. First thing I want to show you is that I have a couple of scripts online in my GitHub repository and you will find all the links in the video description down below. And I'm currently in my Pentoscripts GitHub repository and the thing is I have a script for the things I X network and in there it is, it is explained on how to use this. You basically just connect via SSH wire shell to your pantaminer and then you just paste in this command it will open up a prompt and it will ask you a couple of things if you press enter you put in your polygon address and then you can add your gateway to your actual polygon address and therefore connect it to the things ix network the issue i had was that in my setup config and you can look in everything you want everything is open source in here the issues that I have is in the Penta X2, there are two different concentrator boards built in. So in the first couple of batches that Penta shipped out to the customers, they built in a, another concentrator than what they are putting in nowadays. And therefore you have a couple of different config files. Normally you would configure your global.config.json file, but in this case, for whatever reason, Panther decides to use templates for all the different regions, as you can see. And they did this twice for the old concentrator and for the new one. And I missed to check if all the configs has been changed properly. So what you can do if you use my script and you're not sure if you used the script correctly, um, what you can do is you can put out the actual file, the slash Etsy, global underline, conf, json, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Um, basically use the, the cut command and put it out in your shell and take a look if the port has actually been changed to 1688. If we take a look and scroll down here, we see that the surf port up and the surf port down they normally sit on 1680 they should be changing to 6088 and i will do this for both files so 
if you use my script it shouldn't matter if you have the old concentrator or the new one because from the get-go I will change both files there's one thing that uh, you need to keep track of and I have set this up in this uh, as well as that if you just change those templates and you save it and you leave it for 10 minutes it will change them back to the old one so therefore you need to stop a service and I should have this in here somewhere. Yeah, I, I have this somewhere in here to, to actually ch uh, stop the service that is no longer changing the files. So this script that I have is basically just use it and it should work. So that was the issue that I was not checking if I if my script has changed the, the files correctly and I was doing some rework of my script so therefore I haven't really checked and I was assuming that everything was working correctly but then never, nevertheless I I got it working and if you do not get your Panda X2 device or whatever device working um, check out the things I X discord there are plenty of people willing to help even myself I'm from time to time I'm, I stick around there and I help people so just come over there and uh, yeah, we will figure our issues out. So let's move forward and let's talk about what actually the Things IX network is and how the mapping works. So let's take a look on how the actual mapping process on the Things IX network works and why this is different to other networks such as Helium. So in here we have a graphic and you can see on the top left corner we have our actual mapper. And the mapper is sending a gateway discovery packet over the lower run network over this protocol and it got this packet gets received by gateway a this example is for two different gateways and this explains a simple process that is taking in the background to understand how your packets get selected so as i said the mapper is sending a gateway discovery packet and this gateway discovery packet gets been received by the gateway A and the gateway B. Now the gateway discovery packet is being forwarded to the coverage mapping service, so that is a server somewhere in the background. And also the gateway discovery packet that has been received by the gateway B is also being received to this mapping service server. And this service in the background selects which gateway should be used for the actual downlink, so for a message back to the mapper. Now the mapper receives this from the gateway B because in this example the gateway B has a be better is nearer or closer to the mapper so therefore the signal and the strength will be better so gateway B will be selected to create a downlink message to the actual mapper now this mapper indicates a white light and sends back the signal strength report this signal strength report gets been uh, also re received by gateway A and gate gateway B so therefore this will be forwarded to the mapping service so that we can check everything is all right and then your actual mapper has mapped a certain location a geolocation on the map and the nearest or the best gateway will be mapped and therefore this gateway will be rewarded for the actual mapping service and that it is providing coverage in this certain area and also the mapper gets rewarded for this that's why you do this there is no such thing as in helium where your device does a beacon and a wrist witness and stuff like this um, and therefore generating rewards about this service. In this example of things I ask, you only can create rewards if you actually create coverage where people can use the network. Or you get rewards if you run around with a mapper and you check if the gateway is actually there and you have a connection to it in this specific gateway location. And there's one cool thing that I like about things I ask. Whenever you try to change something about the mapper, when you screw it open and you try to change the antenna for better gain, like a bigger antenna or something else, they will notice this. This is noticeable in the actual signals that you send and they will ban 